All right. Well, let's uh, let's kick off the 2023-24 year of uh, Zooming with the National Home. So um, tonight we're going to meet um, some of the staff. We have uh, our executive director, Mike Wilson, and some other folks. So we'll introduce them um, as we get going. In the meantime, Megan's going to jump on and do a little bit of housekeeping. And Megan Mitchell is our, uh, as some of you may know, our communication specialist and event coordinator. Hey everyone. And Mother Tomato. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> um, so all of you are very seasoned Zoomers here. I see almost all of you have muted, which is great. That is something that we ask everyone to mute um, so that that background noise isn't distracting during the presentation. Um, is everyone familiar with the hand raising function? Just cut out on us, Megan. That was anyways. weird. I bumped something. Sorry. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, there's a smiley face with a plus sign on it. And that is uh, where you can find your hand raise function. If you click on that, if anyone has a question during the uh, meeting that, that you absolutely have to ask, please use the hand raise function and we will make sure that your question gets answered. We are going to open it up to Q&A at the end. So we do kind of ask if you can just kind of write out your thoughts so that you can ask your question at the end as we go through all of the staff that are gonna be introducing themselves and presenting. Um, if you have anything that you need from us, uh, please use the chat function to put your name and contact information. And that way we can follow up with you after the meeting and get you any of uh, anything that you need um, or send you links or contact information that you might need. Um, let's see here. Um, we are recording this meeting and we're going to be sending the recording out shortly afterwards, along with an invitation to next month's meeting. So keep an eye out for that in your email. And uh, we will be announcing the topic for next month's meeting during uh, in that email. So without further ado, I'm going to turn things back over to Sue. Okay, just a little history about the meeting. They originated with the um, National Ambassador, Buddy Poppy, uh, National Home Chairman a few years ago. And the it, we had such a great response. We just, we started opening it up to everybody. So feel free when you get that link, that invite to share with anybody that you think would benefit from learning more about the National Home. Um, after our presentation, the National Home staff will sign off, but I believe Lisa Jackson, the 2023-24 Buddy Poppy National Home uh, Ambassador, was is asking you folks to stay on um, for those that, that want to. Correct, Lisa? Perfect. So the goal of Zooming with the National Home is really to connect with as many folks as we can across the country. Ideally, we'd love for everybody to visit the National Home and, uh, you know, experience it in person. But um, I, we know that that's not, you know, it's just not uh, something that everybody can do. So we want to bring the National Home to you. Um, we want to um, educate you on what we do. Um, I, I call the National Home, it's truly a national treasure. And we want to um, educate you the best that we can via Zoom. Um, with different meetings, uh, different meeting topics. And um, again, just share the Zoom uh, link when you get it to anybody that uh, you think would like to know more about the National Home. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our Executive Director, Mike Wilson. Let me unmute myself here. Hi, everybody. Um, I think by now we're, we're about... Uh, 20 months into this rodeo um so i can say i have completed my first rodeo and uh um uh and enjoy every day I, I love going to the national home every single day As a matter of fact sometimes i don't leave i just stay there so um always always fun and and great things going on at the national home uh i'm supposed to look at this my intro and my background i should start with my intro and my background I, I would hope everybody knows who i am by now but if not uh, I retired out of the Army National Guard uh, back in 2009 and began working for the Army, uh, taking care of surviving families of service members when they passed away. I did that for uh, about six years. Then I uh, took a position with our state veteran affairs agency and worked supporting veterans for the next five years, um, uh, learning all the ins and outs of the VA, how to support veterans, local veteran support, 
um, worked in a region, uh, doing some regional collaboration. Um, and then I took off on my own, started my own um, small business, uh, helping organize small um, organizations, helping them set up their bylaws and, and articles. And uh, I helped some small businesses become more veteran friendly, veteran ready. Uh, and that was all my business. And then this opportunity uh, came up uh, late in 2021. And I was super excited about the opportunity to come. And I'm sure glad that I was the one selected to take on the new role. So, um, man, I don't I don't want to steal anybody's thunder because all the directors are on here and they've all got great and exciting things to say. So I don't want to cut in too much on them. But uh, I can tell you, we had an exciting milestone a couple weeks ago. Uh, I'll let Angie share the statistics, but uh, let's just say we are now working on a waiting list. And so um, it's been a long, long time since we've had to start uh, figuring out a waiting list. And as I said in our director meeting a couple of weeks ago, we now have a whole new set of problems. And so uh, we uh, are okay with that and we are up for the challenges um, of what it's going to take uh, going forward. Uh, I would ask you all, I guess I could share this. It's, it's pretty much a done deal. Um, if you don't have Lifetime Channel on your um, on your uh, list of uh, broadcast channels, call your local cable company and make sure they set it back up. Because on November 15th, the premiere of the um, make, Military Makeover with Montel Williams Operation Career 30-minute special on the VFW National Home uh, exclusive will come out on November 15th on the Lifetime channel. I don't know what time. Uh, it's not It's not scheduled yet, but um, you'll also be able to see it streaming on the Lifetime website, um, and then it'll be run a couple other times, and um, then it'll be uh, available on the Lifetime app. Uh, for those of you that are strictly streaming, you'll be able to see it on the streaming app after that. But we just had our production meeting with the final production meeting with the production crew today. We've got our plan together, and uh, they'll be coming out uh in a couple of weeks I, I would disclose the time but it's not necessary at this point um uh to start filming and they'll be on our campus for about two and a half days filming the episode and then they'll go back take a month or so to sort it all out and then uh, we'll premiere and uh, we will make sure everybody knows when we have it finished and then what date and i'm sure they'll have um what they call them teasers leading up to it or something and we'll be able to share that with everybody so we're pretty excited about that it's been a while been a long time since there's been a expose on the national home and so uh november 15th lifeline national home what was that oh anyways so that that's coming up uh look forward to uh seeing that and uh We'll probably run it, you know, as reruns on our page for forever. But uh, we're looking forward to a great, um, uh, great half hour episode of what things going on at the National Home. If you've been keeping track at all, we uh, Internet has been an issue for us for years and years and years. And so struggling to get enough broadband to all the families. Um, uh, thanks to our he won't be on tonight, I don't think. But thanks to our IT manager, Jesse, we've sorted through the the mess and got it all figured out and we're hoping that by the end of next week they're flipping the switch and everybody will have one gig um internet service in all the houses and all the administration buildings and so that's exciting the families are excited uh you know they won't no longer have to shut off the kids homework so they can watch the nightly news or shut off the netflix so the kids can play a video game they'll all have enough uh broadband in their houses that they won't have to shut off anything. They'll be able to run all of their electronics. And as you know, these days, it's all about the electronics. So uh, that should be happening in a couple of weeks. But just always exciting stuff going on at the National Home. We're getting ready for a couple of uh, uh, couple of days with Illinois and Indiana and some exciting things going on there. Is someone else going to talk about our special guests at Illinois or Indiana? Or Sue, do you want to talk about them? or um, Lynn's uh, The, the buddy poppy. Lynn, Lynn Bloomer is going to be on after you. Is, okay. is Lynn on? Yep. I am. Okay. okay. Well, that's oh, her oh, there she well, is. She'll talk about that when I turn it over to her. So, okay. um, yeah, a couple of great and cool guests we got coming to visit us pretty soon. And uh, Rick will talk about our other special guests that are coming. Well, I, with that, um, if anybody has any questions for me, I'll be on later and look forward to hearing your questions. But uh, just know it's always exciting at the National Home. And if you come on down, bring your sunglasses because it's a bright, it's, it's a bright <laughs> future for the National Home all the time. So <laughs> I'll, I will turn it over to Lynn, is she going on next? 
She's next. Okay, Lynn, turn it over to you. Back to you, Lynn. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lynn Bloomer. I am the chief of staff at the VFW National Home. In a couple of weeks, I will have been here for five years um, doing all kinds of manners of support for the executive office and for the board of trustees. Um, my job primarily is to do all of the things that Mike gives me to do. Um, and then I have a couple of very specific jobs that uh, pertain to me. So I take care of the board of trustees, do their help with their travel arrangements when they're coming in for board meetings um, and manage the process of getting all of the information ready for the board meetings. And then I also coordinate the Buddy Poppy program um, when that comes around. And then I take care of the elections. The election process starts with me for people that are interested in becoming trustees of the national home. So I send out the information starting usually uh, in November or December for the following election cycle that ends on June 1st. So we have two trustees that come on the board every year and two trustees that leave the board every year. So there's always somebody coming and going and an education process that uh, goes along with that. So um, I, yeah, I, every day is a new adventure with my job. I never quite know what to expect is going to be happening on any given day with um, all of the big dreams that Mike has for the home. And it's exciting to see it all come together right now. Um, uh, Mike referred to uh, somebody, a special guest that's coming this weekend uh, for Indiana Day on Sunday. We have a lady by the name of Betty Joan Adamson, uh, who lived at the home starting in 1931. She was the 1932 Buddy Poppy. Uh, she was able to travel to Washington, D.C. at the age of three years old with the VFW National Home Director and pin a, um, the first poppy of 1932 on President Herbert Hoover's chest. And um, she is still alive. She lives in Indiana and she is 95 years old and is super excited to come back to the home this weekend. And she's gonna be doing an interview with a writer and we'll do some video footage and give her the VIP tour of campus. She um, came back to campus in 2015 for the first time since she was a little girl and wanted to come back one more time before she died. And her son tells me she's not planning on dying, but she figured she better make the trip because she's 95. So <laughs> she's coming to, um, she's coming up on Saturday and spending the night in the guest lodge. And then we'll uh, do some interviews on Sunday morning and then take part, do a campus tour and be part of the program for the Indiana day. So that'll be fun to, hear about the adventures of um, her time at the National Home in 1931. She lived there till she was 17 years old with her older sister and her younger brother. So it'll be interesting to hear her take on how, just how much has changed to, in the few years that have gone by since she last lived there. So what houses did she live in, Lynn? She lived in the Massachusetts house and the Wisconsin house when she was growing up. So she still has the little pink dress that she wore when she went to Washington, D.C. And her plant, she's still, uh, it's in her possession. But when she dies, she has it willed to the National Home um, as part of the museum collection. So it's kind of crazy to think about the things you hold on to. <laughs> you know, you never know when you're going to need them again. So here in this case, it'll be a fun addition to the museum. So um, any questions of me at all? No? All right. Um, I'm not sure who's next on the list. Megan? 
It's me. It's Angie. Angie. It's yeah. Angie. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Angie Harkins. I am the program director at the National Home. Uh, actually, today is a year and a half that I've been with the National Home. So it's been an amazing time so far. Before um, I took this job, I worked for the Michigan National Guard in their family programs office for just under 17 years. Um, and the main focus of that was to take care of the service members and their families. So it's a passion of mine. Um, I am a military spouse. My husband just retired about two years ago after 21 years of service. Um, so he's still in that transition stage. Um, and we have three kids. So that's a little background on me. Um, Mike mentioned earlier about some exciting news that we have um, within the program office. And that is that two weeks ago, we are now officially full. So 41 of our 42 homes have families living in it. Uh, the one house is Maryland, which is getting some renovations. Um, so we are full with a waiting list. We just had a family move out uh, last week, uh, the Georgia house, and we already have a family slated to move in. So um, it's exciting time in our office uh, to be full and we will, that waiting list will build. So we're super excited. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick of what falls under program office because I know next month um, the program office will be going in detail about our program. But under the program office, we have the case management that works with the families. Um, we also, the helpline falls under that. We also have the Early Education Center, which is our um, on-site licensed daycare center uh, for kids five and under. We also have the Veteran and Family Resource Center. And we also have support services that does uh, works with our school-age kids throughout the school year and uh, in the summertime. Uh, so we're a busy office, uh, but we all love what we do. Um, and there's never a dull day. So, but like I said, next month, we will go more into detail about the program's office. But exciting news is um, our Veteran and Family Resource Center, we just welcomed Bill and Rebecca um, into the Resource Center. And Rebecca's on with us tonight. Bill is not. Uh, his daughter is getting married tomorrow. So uh, he's at the rehearsal dinner. Um, and so he will introduce himself next week. Uh, he is the Veteran and Family Resource Center manager. So he will run the Resource Center and bring in the resources that the family needs and the veterans need in our community. So we're super excited. He has a lengthy knowledge of working with veterans and their families. Um, he served himself. So we're happy to um, bring him in as an addition. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca, who is our veteran navigator and peer support person, um, and let her introduce herself. Hello. Um, as Angie said, I am Rebecca. I'm the veteran navigator and peer support specialist. I am a veteran of the Michigan Army National Guard. Um, I'm also the spouse of a former veteran turned current guardsman. Um, so been around the military a long time. Um, we have two young kids as well. So I apologize if I have to drop off because they are running around here unsupervised at the moment. Um, I've worked in military and veteran services for seven years. I started at the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency as uh, one of their resource technicians. And from there, I moved on to the Michigan National Guard Family Programs Office, working alongside Angie's team. Um, and then I came to the VFW National Home at the beginning of this month. So uh, as the veteran navigator, I work alongside our case managers to help locate and access resources to meet the veteran and family needs. Um, but I'm also in a really unique position where I'm a fellow veteran and a military spouse, and I've been in similar situations as our veterans that are in need. Um, so as the peer support specialist, I get to help the veterans understand the supports that are available to them through the eyes of someone who's used these resources. And peer support also focuses on mental health recovery. And I do that by helping to remove some of the barriers to treatment and resources to minimize the stressors that can affect, that can negatively affect the recovery for residents. Um, so I'm gonna be working with the Veteran and Family Resource Center to bring in a lot of those much needed resources. And we're gonna be working to set up new and support the existing veteran peer groups on campus. Uh, so I am very much 
looking forward to digging in on that. I've only been with, with the home about three weeks, so I'm still getting my feet under me a little bit, but I'm very excited to be. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay, Rick. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Rick Stiver. Um, I'm the director of facilities uh, for the VFW National Home. I've been there about four months now. Um, I spent 22 and a half years in the Army. Um, after that, um, I was a facilities director for um, a apartment community. Um, they have about 20,000 um, beds. Um, and so I was the director of facilities for most of the student side in East Lansing, um, including the famous Cedar Village, um, which is fun and exciting. Um, I have four daughters and um, one grandchild. Um, my first grandson, it's the, the um, a, I just I tell my girls all the time I don't like you no more because now I have a grandson. So uh, I absolutely love the VFW National Home. Um, after re retiring from the military, it took me a while to find something that I was truly excited about. Um, and then I got this opportunity. Um, and every day I'm excited to come to work. Um, so I hope that um, with, with everything goes right, I'll stay here until I retire. Um, I don't know when that will be, but um, at some point in life, I plan to retire. Um, we've got some projects on uh, campus going, um, always projects. Um, some big ones is the Welcome Center renovation, um, the Maryland House renovation, and of course, the Pollitt House, um, what we are deciding to do with that. Um, but that's more in the future. Um and on October 27th, um, we get the privilege of bringing the Spencer family um, onto campus. So um, as you know, Corey Spencer was the farmer um, that gave the land um, to the VFW to, to establish the VFW National Home. Um, one of my good friends is part of uh, the Spencer family. Um, and the last surviving sibling of uh, Margaret Spencer, which was Corey Spencer's sister, um, him and his family are going to come out and visit us. So the great thing is, is all the trustees will be there at that time. Um, so everybody will get the chance um, to uh, meet the Spencer family. Um, it's pretty exciting, um, especially with, with the 100 year coming up. Um, and maybe sometime, some way we can do something at the hundred year if there are, if he's still around. Um, with that, um, I will wait to the end for questions. If we haven't, if anybody has any for me, I'll turn it over to Lynn Hagerman. Okay, I'm Lynn Hagerman. I'm the finance director um, with the home. I've been here for 11 years now. Before that, I lived in Washington State and worked for Hilton Hotels for about 28 years before coming here. Um, we do everything obviously related to finance and numbers. We close the books every month, work on the budgets, try to keep people within their budget, which sometimes is difficult. Um, Talking about you, Rick. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Um, but uh, we work on the estates and perpetual trusts that come in. Basically, anything that has to do with numbers and finance comes through um, my office. Um, we do get an audit every year, and we just are in the midst of our audit. And those... Um, the 990 and the audit of financials are always posted on our website. Um, for you, for anybody can look at, you know, when you view our, our finances. Megan's going to pull that up real quick where, where you can find it. So it's under the About Us tab where it says Governing and Funds. 
And then if you scroll down, you can see all of our uh, audits and 990s for the last like six years, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So in probably November, um, mid-November, we'll be able to post the current um, 990 and audit once that gets complete and um, the trustees, you know, get it and we vote on it or, you know, they see it, uh, then that'll be posted. The current one will be posted on there. Um, basically, that's um, finance in a, in a nutshell, anything to do with the numbers and and budgets and, and financial information comes through us. Great. Thanks, Lynn. Appreciate it. Okay, well, my name is Sue Alverson. I'm, I'm the development director at the National Home. And October 8th, I will celebrate 11 years. And for my coworkers, I do accept lunch dates and donuts and things like that on that date. So just a, just a reminder. Um, so Megan and I work in the development department and she's going to put up the website. I'd just like to quick touch base on a couple things. As um, you folks know, the National Home um, is predominantly or, uh, predominantly funded by individuals and organizations such as the VFW and the auxiliary, as well as businesses and corporations that um, uh, support veteran causes. So we certainly appreciate your support. Um, do you got this, Megan, or is it mine? I was going to take you to. Sorry, <laughs> I have. Can everyone see the screen? They can see the website. It says governing funds. Yep. You just tell me where you want me to go. Uh, go to how how to help. Okay. Yep. Or, I'm sorry. You, you can, can help. That's yep. that's us. You can help. So this is. There we go. I'm there. Can everyone see? Yep. Okay. Yep. So th these are, uh, this is the website where you can place um, one-time donations. You become, you can become a Homefront Hero, which is our monthly giving program. You can sign up to be a life member. Um, you can print that on the, uh, from the website also. You can place your um, tribute bricks and you can look at the tribute park and, um, you can also uh, plan your legacy through our planned giving program. Uh, the one thing I wanted to touch base today um, on is the Centennial Gardens. If you can go back up to the top and go down to Centennial Gardens. Yep, that is our special 2025 project. This, um, this will be located adjacent to our tribute park. Um, so if you're looking at the tribute park, if you've been there, it's gonna be off to the east. So this is a special fundraiser for our 2025 year. Uh, if you're familiar with our current brick program, which is still going, it's the $100 uh, brick, which is four by eight. Um, these are special bricks, they're $500. And um, it will they will be placed around that centerpiece that you see around that tree. So we're really excited about that. We've already started selling them. Um, so please feel free to, to promote that uh, within your membership. So um, we will open it up now to questions. So you got you got pretty much the whole shebang here. So uh, anywhere you can have questions from our strategic plan to um, facilities, program, finance, um, and of course, fundraising. So if there's any questions, Megan's gonna look for hands. It looks like Sue Gregg has a question. Yep, a uh, bunch of, a uh, lot of our sisters and brothers clip coupons. Can the National Home use them? Grocery like, coupons? Yeah. Ange, you still pass coupons out, don't you? Uh we we did, but we haven't in the last couple months because the residents were weren't really coming up to get them. Oh, okay. You get getting their own. They were getting their own. Yes. Okay, that's no problem. We'll send them in the troop boxes then. But well, thank you for thinking of them. I 
just double check because I know it gets expensive to go buy groceries anymore <laughs> and supplies. It does. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sue. Not a problem. Next, we have Marilyn Arcoletta. Well, hi there. Uh, my question is that uh, Spencer Family Day, they're coming, the ones that donated land for National. I don't, I missed that date. When is that going to happen? It's uh, October uh, 27th. Oh, so that's during the um, annual meeting time. Yes. Perfect. So th they're going to be there for the annual meeting? It looks like they're coming the day before. Is that correct, Rick? I, I have a conversation set up with them tomorrow to figure out if they'll stay for Saturday as well. Right now, tentatively, it's just Friday, but we're it's hoping that it's Saturday. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I have Kelly Durkee Irwin next. Um, I'm doing a fundraiser in November. When we get the funds from the person doing the fundraiser, the the people who like whatever, <laughs> when I get the money, who do I send it to? Sue, you're muted. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> who do you send it to? Mm -hmm. Uh, you can send it attention development. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. I have Darla Lowe next. You know how you showed your website, Kim? We, we, in here in Ohio, we have a chairmanship Facebook page. Would I be able to, because I'm the department chairperson for um, Buddy Poppy National Home, would I be able to bring your web page up and do kind of like what you did on Facebook? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Facebook page. absolutely. You can share links from our website directly onto your Facebook page. I don't know if you do any kind of Zoom meetings with your group, but you can always um, pull up any kind of website and screen share it if you wanted to walk people through where to find things, kind of like I was doing. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. And we're going to get into the website a little bit more as we go into um, specific meetings, too. I don't see any other hands raised. Is any other, other questions? questions? David, are you waving? Yes, yes. ma'am. <laughs> I was trying. A uh, question, or a couple of them actually. Uh, the the little cards that have the phone number, the helpline phone numbers and stuff on them. I think I looked online there on your in your store and everything, and I don't see them. Can we get any? One. Uh, uh, and number two, uh, since it's now the VFW National Home, do you have new pamphlets and stuff for that? Yes. The, for the children. Yes. Yes. On the new literature, um, we have a general brochure. We have a eligibility brochure. Um, as far as the helpline cards, we are no longer uh, producing those. It's uh, um, the information's found on, well, pretty much everywhere on all of our literature. Um, okay. the help yeah. And, and if I right, could so just, oh, sorry. I was just going to show them real quick, Sue, where to order promotional items on the website as well. Right. I put the link in the chat, but if you guys go to You Can Help and scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's an order promotional item section, and that's where you can get the most recent national home uh, promotional items. Um, we have switched to like a two-sided card um, style brochure for both uh, one that explains our eligibility and one that's like a general brochure. Outstanding. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm assuming you got my email, right, David, on the Tribute Park? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm working on it. I'm trying to get my treasurer to give me the exact amount I have right now. All right. Just, <laughs> just checking. Just checking. Yes, ma'am. I got it. <laughs> right. Oops. I just... Um... Diane, did you have your hand raised? I did. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to get it raised anyway. <laughs> um, my name's Diane Pettit, and I'm from Indiana. As a matter of fact, we'll be up there this weekend, so I'm yeah. looking forward to that. We've got two bus loads coming up that we know of. Um, 
my part of my question well i had kind of a couple questions one was um for rick he talked about a some kind of a building that they're looking at doing something with what building is that i mean we have three projects i mean we have the pallet house renovation that's the um, one I, I i don't know what that building is what's the pilot so that's a home on campus um and actually the pilots were the first family to be on campus um so that's it's a home Okay, um, so that's why it's called that. I I just didn't recognize that building or that that name. I mean, we know the museum, the admin building, the community center, and all that. I just did not recognize that particular name. Um, do you know what home's going to be available for us to be able to look at? Because I know we can't go to our Indiana home this year. We um currently we don't have any homes because we are full. Um, we don't have any homes that are going to be able to be toured. Okay, well, I knew we couldn't get to the Indiana one because there was someone in there. I mean, we've always gone to it before whether someone was in there. They just made arrangements for them not to be there or whatever the case may be. But uh, Diane, uh, we yeah, we changed that that. Um, procedure. So we do mm -hmm. not enter um, occupied homes any longer. Right. And, and I understand that. Yeah. But then we were also told that there would be a home that we could go through, but I guess not now. That's correct. Cause are we they, are, well, do they have any kind of sample stuff that um, like posters or anything that the people can look at some of these homes or the insides of them? I was I'm trying gonna, to get some information on the Indiana one to put up, but it looks like Annabelle's trying to get our attention. One second, Annabelle. I just want to pop everyone over real quick to our YouTube yeah. channel, because if you go to our YouTube channel and go to playlists, there is a playlist of virtual home tours um, that'll let people see what some of our houses look like. I believe every style of house we have is represented. So we've got the two-story brick homes of the 20s, 30s, 40s. We've got the ranches on here and we also have the duplexes. So um, I unfortunately, Indiana is not one of the houses that we currently have a tour available of, but you should be able to get an idea and show people what the houses look like okay. by looking through some of the virtual tours. Now, will they by chance have like a, a, a screen or something that this might be playing through for people to walk by and look at at the community center? I don't believe we have plans to have that playing in the community center. Um, but what I can do is I can share this link to this playlist to you. If you want to uh, share this with your department. Okay. Yeah, that will help. And we are working on getting virtual tours of all the houses. That's the goal eventually to have 42 tours of houses. Um, you know, it just takes time getting in there in between families and stuff. Well, I know we're looking forward to coming up this weekend. We come up Saturday and then and stay in Lansing and go to the VFW 701 and always have a great time there. And then we come out to the home on Sunday. So we're looking forward to it. We are very much looking forward to it as well. And as you know, we're going to have great weather. That's just going to make it that much better. Absolutely. That's That's the one thing that's always so nice is when we come up and we're on the bus, we can look because... Right about this time is when all the leaves are changing and yeah. it is just so pretty to look at the changing yeah. and, and, uh, the weather's usually very comfortable. So we're looking forward to that. We're not going to have quite the colors this year. Um, we're a little behind right now because mm -hmm. of the weather, but, uh, I heard him say that they were going to, they were having some renovations in the community center. Will we still be able to get in there to do our presentations and our lunch and stuff? Yeah, I don't, there's nothing going on in the gym, right, Rick? No, that's the welcome center. Um, okay. But the renovations for the welcome center have not started yet. Um, we will be doing a groundbreaking ceremony soon. Um, but then we've still got quite a, a little ways to go before we start on that. Is the welcome um, center, the admin building down by the entrance? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, I was getting that confused with yeah. the community center. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's where the where you go in um, and where the souvenir shop is. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've renamed that to the Welcome Center. So. Okay. Annabelle has had her hand raised. <laughs> Oh, you got to unmute, Annabelle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, a um, couple things. One thing is just for her to answer her a little further. Um, that is a reason behind that is privacy acts. We cannot go into those family homes anymore. Rules have changed in Michigan and all. And it thing is, um, Megan answered with the homes. We are working really hard to get the vir virtual, but this is one of the problems that are gonna be presented because we are full. We can't offer tours anymore for the, for the different days. So that this is one of our new problems, which is a good problem. And for everyone to know, I'm board president. I didn't, I didn't say that when I started, but I am your board president and um, I just want to thank all of you for everything you do. Um, you do plenty for the home. Keep it up. We're doing great. The staff, we've got the most wonderful staff we could ask for at the home. Had a, a great person like Wilson. Um, and I'm just really happy to be part of all of this. Uh, I've got great trustees and many of them are on tonight. Um, I just want to say to you all, there's a lot of new, exciting, bright things at the National Home. Again, like Mike said, bring your sunglasses. Thanks, Megan. Are there any other questions? All right. That it? Awesome. Um, well, we appreciate you taking some time out um, this Thursday evening and joining us. Uh, we do you know that next month will be a presentation program uh, of program. So that'll be Angie and Rebecca will jump back on and you'll meet Bill. And uh, then November 16th, you're going to meet the board of trustees. They don't know that yet, but um, mm -hmm. that, that evening will be dedicated to them. And uh, they're going to report on what's going on in their districts. And then we will not have a meeting in December. So that's just a little snapshot of, of, uh, the next few months. So again, thank you. Um, I've known some of you for a long time and we really appreciate all you've done. Um, and we're heading to Missouri, Missouri next week. We got a golf outing that we're going to, and I'm being forced to golf. So yes, yes, um, yes. It's going to be fun. <laughs> yep. I'll, we'll see you, Marilyn Archuleta. So anyway, yes, um, yes ma'am, Sue. <laughs> if I'm looking any, forward to it. Yeah. So are we. So are we. So any questions, please um, drop us a line in the uh, chat box. We're going to leave this up because Lisa wants to chat with her group. And I'm going to let Mike uh, close us out. Thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs> 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 well, thank you all for uh, being being a part of the National Home and being a part of this Zoom. I think it's great that we get a chance to share you know, what we're doing uh, departmentally as well as overall. And uh, certainly appreciate all the questions. Um, we we do have some exciting things happening and um it uh, like i said it energizes me i know it energizes you it does create questions and that's okay because we want to make sure everybody understands exactly what's happening at the national home and what we're trying to do what our future is we have a strategic plan it's on the website too you can look at that we're going to gather again in february of 24 and uh, start building the second century of service of course that kicks off in uh, 2026 and so uh we are looking ahead all the time at uh, more and more ways. Uh, I always I always quote the movie Hacksaw Ridge. The as the if you've seen the movie, the medic is helping the injured soldiers down from the mountain, and he just keeps saying, "Please God, just let me get one more." And that's the way it is at the home. Let's just just let us get one more family. We want one more family. And so I wouldn't be able to sleep right if we weren't pushing to fill every single house and make sure every family we can help is helped. And so. Um, be looking forward to, uh, maybe in the next several months, we start talking about putting some new houses on land, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. But, uh, that's what we do. We're glad that you're a part of us. We're glad you support us and, um, yeah, feel free, drop a line, give us a question, any questions you got. We're here to answer them for you and help as best we can make everybody understand what we did with the national home. So Sue, that's all I got. And I will, uh, sign off for now. Excellent.
Good night, everybody. Good night.